We're here in at FitCon with Lawrence Cow, yeah. um, and you describe yourself as a filmmaker, but not you know not a, a video maker. No, um, yeah, we really respect the craft of filmmaking, the the longer development times, the planning, uh, the proper narrative story arc. I mean, it's why we're called the narrative. We really believe in that. So we look at obviously we like videos and we like things that support. Um, uh, basically the overall project but for us you know there's uh, the reason why we like film so much is because it includes everything from uh, illustrators musicians music audio uh, every single art can kind of be put together and that's why we like film. But, but your background is not filmmaking right you're you're a computer guy yeah that's absolutely correct so I started off in the 90s actually I look a lot younger than than I actually am uh, in uh, coding. This is before a world of Google, and the number one job was to work for Microsoft or, or IBM when they still made uh, computers, uh, software at the time. And um, as the world has become more and more traditional, I think media, content, film, they've all kind of come together. And so because of that, I was able to make the leap from computers to television and film. Yeah, because the, you know the expected path would be that you would make f videos. So why do you why wh what's the you know wh why do you decide to make films instead of just videos? To be honest, I think if you ask anyone here at VidCon uh, what they wanted to do when they were a kid, I don't think anyone really says, "Oh, I want to be a video maker or a beauty vlogger." And the reality is, they probably wouldn't say that because it didn't exist. They say things like, I watched Jurassic Park and it inspired me to pick up a camera and to start making. Or maybe a star in the US like Ellen DeGeneres as a TV presenter, you know, really inspired me to talk about issues. I think fundamentally that's where still a lot of where we get, um, you know, our heroes and what we're looking at. And so for me, that's how we still think about it. So what do you think you bring to the table compared to a traditional production, you know, a film co a company or f a production film company? Because they, you know, they're educated and they make films all their lives. And you sort of, you know, you know, the new kid on the block. So what's the difference? Okay, so I actually think my computer science background uh, helps a lot. So in the 1970s, there was a linear development process called the waterfall model. Uh, created by Frederick Brooks from IBM. And that's how everyone learned computer science. You go through the waterfall model by going through requirements, design, uh, implementation, verification. And one day what I realized when I was budgeting up a comedy, I had put money down for research and development, design, production, post-production. Oh my goodness, like the words were almost the same thing. And today nobody programs in a linear fashion like the waterfall model. In fact, everyone from Twitter to Facebook uses agile development, right? And so actually as a company, what we've done is we've rethought about, well, why hasn't film production been changed in the last 20, 30 years? It, are we missing something? Are we still using a 1975 process? And so because of that, uh, obviously we still respect traditional filmmaking, but we're injecting some of our computer science knowledge into it. So what kind of brands are you working for now? So we don't work with too many brands. We typically work with broadcasters uh, or film studios. So. We were the first company ever to be commissioned by the BBC Worldwide for a digital series. Uh, and that was broadcast quality and would be sold around the world. And uh, we've worked with National Geographic on a pilot. Uh, we've been commissioned by CNN. Uh, and now, hopefully, we're going to continue down that path of working with proper journalism and publishing, uh, production, um, sorry, broadcasters, and uh, film studios as we keep going. What have you learned from you know the what the broadcasters want and you know in their sort of um, uh, you know it also you know because they were broadcasting on YouTube as well right so what 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 is how do they look at as this new phenomenon and how they should you know publish or broadcast their content yeah so um, I think the U S and the U K are very different uh, we've worked on both sides uh, the U S broadcasters and platforms they look at a lot of the numbers. They are very, very driven by popular and famous YouTube creators or digital talent. Uh, in Europe, they care about the story first. Um, maybe it's just because it's a function of the BBC and that's what do they do and that's what their mandate is. But um, 
it's all about the idea and I really respect them about that. Now, of course we want reach, of course we want distribution and who doesn't want the biggest talent, but it's gotta be fundamental to the idea. Uh, Planet Earth doesn't get the views because David Attenborough's voice, although it's a huge part of it, is because of the amazing DOPs and producers who are out there to go and capture that content. And I think they kind of uh, still approach digital in that way. And I'm really glad that they do that because otherwise you might get really shallow content. So how does that translate to YouTube? How do, how do they look at YouTube uh, from a BBC perspective? Well, I don't know how the BBC looks at it, but I think what they've bought into with us um, is that we look at it as talent first. There are, I believe, 150 million YouTube channels, um, and I believe 2.1 million of them make money. And that means you have 2.1 million professionals, and we've never seen that before in a pool of talent. But not everyone can take it to the next level. Some of them should be on YouTube and stay on YouTube. Some will create merchandise products one day that has nothing to do with content or the BBC or anything else. So you actually get down to a pretty tight funnel of a few people that I think will want to take it to the next level, and that's what we look at. These people, maybe they did go to film school, or maybe they didn't have the money or the opportunity, but they decided to put their portfolio online, and it just somehow became very popular. And we see them, we say, wow, you might not have the biggest audience, and don't get me wrong, some of them do. We look for the merit and the craft and the dedication to the craft, and it's like, okay, this is something we can invest in for the next 10 years. And that's kind of how we look at it. And I think that's why we're attractive to people like the BBC. And where do you see you know, online video going for the next you know, couple of years? Um, I think online video is going to get shorter and shorter. I think people are unfortunately going to be going in the wrong direction, which is cheaper and cheaper. The way that you see even the budgets or the way that people commission, the shorter they get, the cheaper it gets. And that's actually really unhealthy for the creation of art um, or the creation of, of anything. Uh, I hope more people are going in our direction, which is going upwards, which is how do you reward uh, digital creators and build their careers with bigger and better projects as they become more and more professional. Um, but I don't see that happening. And I, I do feel like we're one of the few companies that are going the opposite way. And uh, we face a lot of headwind, but that's, that's the choice we've decided to go. Do you think you need to commercialize to, you know, to be alive, to stay in business? Oh, yeah. Yeah, of course we have to commercialize. Um, I don't think we necessarily compete with um, some of the other companies in the digital space. Uh, we've been told now, especially because of our show with uh, companies like the BBC, um, we're like an indie production company and we have to actually compete against you know, the really big respected production companies of, of Britain and the United States. We're just the smallish fish in a huge gigantic ocean now that is a traditional one. Uh, but that's okay. That's how all of us start. That's how every production company starts and it's all about hits effectively. And if we can use YouTube principles and agile production methods from software and we can get more chances at creating that um, then we'll get to a, a no, another breakout hit uh, faster than anyone else. Okay. Thanks. Yeah, thank you.